Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so very much for making us a part of your day. My Bible right now is open to the book of Titus, chapter 1. I'm coming back to Titus for one more lesson. So if you can, reach over, get your own copy of God's Word, and turn Titus, chapter 1. I'll be reading the opening four verses there and putting a capstone on our time in studying this book of Titus. I have a gospel tract in my hand. I realize that that we are here the week right before Easter is coming. I hope and pray that you are planning to make this Easter time, this celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a great time, a grand time of telling people why you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and your hope of future resurrection because of the salvation wrought in Christ. We're going to say more about that here in a minute, but let me lead into our Bible study this way. In the first century, Titus was drafted by the Apostle Paul to live and to work in a very hard place called the island of Crete. Let me read you what one man wrote about his whole mission there. It said this, The people on this island were known throughout the Mediterranean world as lazy workers and dishonest merchants. They had a long history of despicable living, and they possessed the morals of an alley cat. End quote. That, my friend, is not not a good description. The poet, a poet from Crete, is actually quoted here in Titus chapter 1 and verse 12, where he says that the Cretans are always liars and evil beasts and slow bellies, which means lazy gluttons. And in that day, if somebody said that a person had been Cretanized, they meant that that person was conducting their life as a liar. Now, all said, the island of Crete in that day was a morally and spiritually ugly place to try to grow a Bible-preaching church. Yet, here was Titus growing a number of churches and doing it well, thank you very much. And the book of Titus was written to help him to grow the churches. And this book will help any local church grow if that church will learn it and then apply it. Help me today. Get your Bible open, Titus chapter 1. Along with getting your Bible, get something on which you can jot down some notes. Would you do that, please? Well, I mentioned having a gospel tract in my hand. And by the way, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract, a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ put together in a way that's easy to hand out, easy to carry, and have ready to hand out. This time of year, right leading up to Easter, is a tremendous time to be giving out gospel tracts because people are interested in the whole thing called Easter. They have, many people have never heard the true presentation of Easter. They know about Easter bunnies and chocolate, but they don't know about the rest resurrection of the Christ who came to save people from their sin, they don't know the story of why he died and why he rose again. The gospel track in my hand right now is designed for teenagers. It's entitled, I Have Plenty of Time. I Have Plenty of Time. This is a track written based upon a true story about a lady or a gal named Mary. She was 19 years of age. She heard the gospel. She knew she needed to be saved, but she postponed making that decision because she had one more party to go to on the way to the party. In a car accident, she died sad story, but friend, she thought she had plenty of time to get saved. Let me ask you, do you know people who think they still have plenty of time to get saved? Here's a great gospel tool. I have plenty of time. A track for people just like that. It's just one of over 40 tracks that's in a sample packet that I want to put into your hands. Would you let me do that, please? At the end of this program, my announcer will give you our contact information 
jot down how to contact us, giving us your name and your mailing address. We'll send you that free sample packet almost without fail in the very next business day's mail. You can just go to our website and contact us there. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Dot org. Well, let me read here Titus chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. I'm going to stop right there. At the very beginning of our study through the book of Titus, I gave you the three big themes of that book. The three big themes are these. Number one, the gospel. Number two, the gospel lifestyle, which deals with the idea of good works and godliness, which shows up here in this book. The third theme is this, the gospel enemies, those who don't like the truth of the gospel. Now, what I'd like to do right now, as I said earlier, is sit down with you and and put a capstone here on our teaching here in Titus. And to do that, I would love to show you a 45-minute PowerPoint presentation, which shows the flow of these three big themes throughout the book of Titus. By the way, my pastor heard I was teaching through Titus on the radio, and he asked me to do just that to the men of our church, and I enjoyed it. And the men said that they could now see how the various paragraphs of the book of Titus all fit and flowed together. Well, radio does not allow for PowerPoint presentations. But I want to do right now is, again, put that capstone of our study time here and to make this following key point. Here it is. This book of Titus on growing healthy churches in an unholy cultural soil is built upon the truth of the gospel and the results of the gospel in the lives of those who believe it. I'm going to say that again. This book on growing healthy churches in unholy soil is built on the truth of the gospel and the results of the gospel on those who believe it. Did you see verse 1? Look at verse 1. It ends with these words, the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Now, the Apostle Paul knew what his ministry focus was when he was working with Titus there on Crete. He knew it was the gospel, but now, after Paul has left Crete and he left Titus to complete the work, Paul reminds Titus of the ministry focus, which is the gospel. The focus of the church planter is the faith or the truth that saves people and then the continuing to teach that salvation truth so that those who believe it fully know it. Verse 1 puts it this way, that they acknowledge it. Then the church planter builds on the truth of the gospel to show how it leads to a life of godliness. That's what a church planter does. Now, listen, friend, you know what the Great Commission is. It has three parts. Number one, declaring the gospel to sinners so that they might believe. Number two, baptizing those that do believe. These new believers openly must identify with the Savior who saves their soul. But then thirdly, the Great Commission is about discipling these believers so that they become mature in Christ. That's the Great Commission. We present the Christ who saves. We publicly own the Christ who saves. And then we grow in the grace and knowledge of the Christ who saves so that we become more and more like him. Beloved, All the Bible doctrines we need to teach people, we need to teach them to the saints, they're all founded on one and only one thing. It is the person of Jesus Christ. We cannot teach about God the Father without teaching about Jesus who is the way, 
to the Father, John 14 says. We can't teach about, oh, God, the Holy Spirit without teaching about Jesus who sent the Holy Spirit to comfort us. We cannot teach the doctrine about sin without teaching that Jesus Christ, the Creator, made all things perfect and good, but man messed it up. Man brought sin. Man brought pain. Man brought brokenness and death, but Jesus was promised he would come and to make all things new. You can't teach the doctrines about angels and about man, about sin, salvation, about the church, and about future events without anchoring it all in the person and the work of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. How in the world are healthy local churches being planted in unholy cultures like Crete? Not just back then, but today. It was happening back then by keeping the person and the good news of Jesus Christ the Savior ever before the people in the churches. And that's what needs to happen today. So tell me, is that what your local church is doing? Is that what you are doing for yourself in your own personal time with God in his word and prayer? Now, frankly, those last two couple of questions may be hard to answer definitively, so let me just rephrase my question. Try this question. Let's measure ourselves, you and I measure ourselves personally, by this question. When was the last time you and I personally not because we're part of a local church service and the pastor's doing this, and not because we're watching some Billy Graham uh, rerun about him preaching the gospel. When was the last time you and I personally, out of our mouths, expressed and explained the gospel to a lost person? Oh, beloved, if it's been a while, then maybe you and I aren't the Christ-centered people we have been telling others that we are. And been telling ourselves that we are. When was the last time you and I upped the ante of our personal holiness because the gospel has impacted us and put us and transferred us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son? And in wanting to grow and be more like him, we have made decisions to alter our lifestyle, alter our thinking, alter what we do with in this, that, or some other area of our life, all because and because in reading the word of God and praying over the word of God, God is prompting us in a new level, a higher level of godliness that we might imitate and proclaim and displace Jesus Christ as Savior. If you're listening right now, do you know what the gospel is? The word means good news. The good news is this, that you, because of your personal sin, you, because you were born and in, in dead in sin, because you're part of Adam's race, you are dead and headed to your place in hell, the lake of fire, and you earn the right to go there by the wages of your own personal sin. But God, who loves you in his grace and mercy, says, I don't want you to go there. I am going to make a way of escape for you. But the way is a deadly one, not for you, but deadly to my only begotten son. I will send my son. He will die on the cross. He will shed his blood. He will take your punishment on himself that you, through him, can be saved. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved from your sin. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.